In C Sharp 4, we got a new feature called Optional Parameters, and it allows us to assign a default value to a parameter so that we no longer have to pass a value to that parameter. Of course, we can if we want to, but otherwise, that default value would be used. And at first glance, it kind of seems like it eliminates the need for overloads, but that's not the case. There are times it makes sense to use an optional parameter, and then there are times when it makes sense to use an overload. And we have a perfect example of both of those scenarios, which we will look at today. So let's get started by creating a default or not a default, but a optional parameter. And it's very easily done. All we have to do is go to the parameter that we want to make optional and give it a value. There we go. So now we can get rid of our overload, our person constructor with only a first name, because now last name is optional. So if we wanted to, we could call this constructor with just a first name, and then the last name would have a default of an empty string, or we could call this constructor with a first name and last name. And if we go to our program.cs file, we see that we have two person objects, John and Jane, and we are passing both the first name and last name. So we should get the same results that we have previously. And there we go. Hello there, Jane Doe. But we could get rid of Jane's last name. Simply call it with a first name, and we get hello there Jane. So now instead of two constructors, we have one that does the same thing. We ha it can accept two parameters, one for the first name and one for the last name, and then it can also just accept one for the first name. And in my opinion, this makes our code even more maintainable than it was before. We have one constructor, so all of that logic is in that one constructor. We don't have to look at multiple constructors, see which one calls the other, or, or anything like that. Our code is a lot more readable, and we've kept the flexibility that we had before. And I would say that this is a perfect example of using an optional parameter. We combined two constructors into one and kept the same functionality and the same flexibility. So I would say that that's perfect. So what about our say hello methods? We have two of those, and it would be nice if we could simplify it using optional parameters. But there's a problem. They both contain, or they both get as input, different types of data. One gets a string, and one gets a person. And we could write a method that uses the string and person as optional parameters. But we would actually have to write more code to do that. We should be validating these inputs and we will get to that in a few days. But if we were going to write say hello using optional parameters, we would have to write even more validation code. And so it would be a trade-off. Would you rather have a more complex say hello method with a lot of validation, or would you have little bite-size say hello methods, one that handled each type of data accordingly? I would rather have the overloads because then it makes it a lot easier to identify issues based upon the data type that's being input to those methods. So it makes sense to use overloads in some times and it makes sense to use optional parameters in others like with our constructor. So it just really comes down to what does it make sense to do.